Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. I thought I'd stop in for a minute and talk a little bit. I know I haven't been doing a lot of cooking on my cooking channel, but things in life are very real right now. And just wanted to be able to share some stuff. And I don't know how many people... Well, I know it's... A pan it's an epidemic all across the the world, but I don't know how many people are feeling the stress like I am regarding this whole COVID-19 deal. So I try to keep busy when I'm at home. I'm still required to come to work because I'm a, an essential employee, so yeah, they have me coming to work. But, you know, I I'm making a lot of crockpot meals and um, trying to, you know, keep busy. Sometimes binge watching movies to keep busy. But I'm also, like, right now I'm reading this book called It's Okay to Laugh and Crying is Cool Too. It's a memoir by Nora McKerney Permont. I got this when I was working at the farmer's market about three years ago from Moon Palace Booksellers. Picked it up when they had a book sale and started it, but never really finished it. Now is really a good time to finish it, you know. So it talks about life crises and life change, and how the author has dealt with that in, in her whole grieving process. Chapter thirty. I wanted to read a little bit of this to you that I found interesting. In chapter thirty, it's called Hoarder. Grief strips you skinless. Skin is important, not just for looks, but because without it, you are walking, you're just a walking pile of exposed nerve endings. That's really the only way to describe our family right now. A bunch of skinless freaks brushing up against our memories just to feel the pain. This sucks because we used to be a lot of fun. It's pretty typical for my siblings and I to laugh so much at one another's jokes that one, our dad used to threaten us with physical violence and or two, our significant others completely remove themselves from the situation and form their own social gathering in another room without us even noticing. But lately, something has been off, namely our skin and also our vibe. We're awkward and strange around one another. Our jokes are more pointed, and none of us has a sense of humor anymore. My brother has recently taken offense to us referring to his sarap as a shawl. I am no longer entertained by any jokes about my loosey-goosey parenting. Actually, I'm just not entertained by anything at all, period. It's hard for me to be around my family. Erin's family, too. And this is why. Erin was her husband, who she married, and she married him on the hospital bed. <laughs> he was in the hospital. And when she had their child, he was in chemotherapy, and he eventually died. It's hard for me to be around my family. Aaron's family, too, and this is why. Grief is lonely. No matter how many other people feel it, they are different, each one, because we've lost different people, different versions of the same men. We are each carrying our own load, and ours, it's ours alone to bear. My siblings and I are so busy licking our own wounds that we've forgotten how damaged we all are, so consumed are we by our own individual grief. We are trying, though, like a group of aliens trying to pass a, as humans by aping the behaviors we observed in others. We hug hello. We try to laugh and joke the way we always have at the expense of one of us. It's forced and awkward, and I know I should have stayed home today because I'm not in the mood for pretending everything is okay when it's not. Wow. 
Nora Bikirni Permont. And on the back of the cover it says, this book is for people who have been through some stuff or have watched someone go through it. This is for people who aren't sure if they're saying or doing the right thing. You're not, but nobody is. This is for people who had their life turned upside down and just learned to live that way. For people who have laughed at a funeral or cried at a grocery store. This is for everyone who wondered what exactly they're supposed to be doing with their wild and precious life. I don't actually have the answer, but if you find out, will you text me? Wow, this is a good read for such a time as this. I mean, today I've got on my rainbow colored sweater. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I keep my bandana on now. Anytime anyone's around, I pull it up. But the sweater reminds me of an episode of Touched by an Angel. Uh, where Delta Burke actually wore this exact design sweater. It's a hand-knit uh, sweater. It's my favorite. And she was grieving in that episode because she was happy and love and in love and carefree and and tragedy came. And you know, tragedy hits us like a curveball. It's like tripping over the sidewalk and having your hip come out of joint. <laughs> um which has happened to me back in the days when I used to be a runner. Um, it's unexpected. Um, and life does mean change and growth is optional, like I say. But being in, in, a, in an epidemic and in a time where everything is just kind of shut down and the world is like a ghost town. Social distancing is everywhere. It's hard. It's stressful. Not gonna lie. It's really stressful. And then you're an essential employee and you're still expected to show up to work and, and do as much of your job as you can and good luck on not getting sick. Stay away from everybody. In MSR, Minneapolis St. Paul Recorder, this is a local newspaper. Um, this week's edition says social distancing side effects include isolation and loneliness. And when I was on, um, Facebook last night, I get on there and I shoot out a bunch of jokes and wacky stuff, trying to keep people happy and upbeat. Some people that I know were posting uh, how hard this is to be isolated and they are much more social than I am, you know, but they're really having a hard time. So if you could send someone a text or an email or give them a call or do a video chat or call and say, hey, I'm reading this cool book. Do that. Hold, open your window and sing out your window. You never know whose life you might change for the better just doing that. I just wanted to take a minute to share like Nora says in this book, in her title, it's okay to laugh and crying is cool too. We're all going through it right now. We can do it. We can make it together.